How to avoid burnout, depression, and feeling lack of self-worth. Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever felt kind of just a, a diminished to your confidence, even though like let's say last month or this time last year, you were at the top of your game and then you just feel like kind of this cloud of, of incompetency, right? Or you feel, or you starting to get the uh, kind of just that paranoia inside your head, like, man, is everybody against me? Are people trying to take me down? because I'm already at the top or because I'm trying to climb and I'm trying to you know, get to the next level of my life? Are they trying to tear me down in order to take the attention or maybe throw me under the bus because they want the position that I too am striving for? If that's happened to you, definitely stick around, watch the entire video because I'm gonna share with you one of the key lessons that I've learned over and over again. And I could speak on this because I, I personally am just like you. We, we are just alike. We go through the same struggle, the same grind, we probably have the same similar background and the same kind of circumstances that we started with up until now. And so what you do today will determine your tomorrow and soon your tomorrow will become now. Get it? And so you'll notice that I never did reference the past because typically it is the past that actually keeps us anchored back. And so in this video, without being too cliche, I'm going to share with you how to avoid burnout. What's up everybody, welcome back to Sales Remastered. My name is Daniel and I am your host. And on this fine Thursday morning, August 19th, I'm gonna share with you a very, very, very powerful method and technique that you can implement today to avoid burnout, to avoid losing confidence, to avoid creating the momentum that actually puts you in a downward spiral because there's two types of momentum there's positive momentum and then there's that negative momentum and you can tell you're on the positive momentum because you're attracting the things that you want people are gravitating towards you people smile your way people come to you for the solution and then you also know when you're on a negative momentum because you get a run of bad luck nothing's working out right like you're always falling behind and so I want to share with you that we ultimately can can reset that momentum at will that's right at will and so this technique is going to share with you how to do so so that you can be more efficient with lesser time because like me I'm a workhorse I'm, I'm down and I'm with it and putting 12 to 15 hours in a day to achieve a particular goal I think that you're like that too that's why you're motivating yourself enough to watch these type of videos and feed your brain with the right type of brain food so that you can have a healthy hustle uh, a healthy dose of hustle nutrition by the way, if this is your first time visiting Sales Remastered, a lot of this is very off the hip and unscripted. It's unedited. You're going to notice besides the sting, you're going to notice that I don't do I don't do retakes, <laughs> right? Like some of the videos that you'll see will cut and then they'll like all of a sudden they're in this position. They're talking all smooth. I don't do it that way. And my, my intent is to not only show you that this is this is genuine, this is real, but also to to demonstrate uh, kind of a mindset of practicing right if, of actually kind of leading by example and the example that I'm trying to give is that sometimes what holds us back is that we're afraid to embarrass ourselves and I want to share with you that if you could just rid yourself of that fear you'll actually become more powerful and unlock things and create the the courage that you need to have as the characteristic of your ideal self and so speaking of your ideal self because that has a lot to do with this technique you know, I want to share with you how how I'm experienced, how I personally experienced this, and so if you can relate, then you you should you should definitely try it because it it does help, and it can ultimately be the tool or the technique that you use time and time again, and I believe that you're going to use it again because this instance will happen again, and what I'm talking about is when you know that your your energy is not where it should be your mentality and your attitude is not where it needs to be and even though you know it's not it is just the an absolute challenge it's trying it's like trying to lift up a one ton truck right like you could try you could believe that you can you could really try but no matter what you do it's it's hard right it's it's so hard to just lift yourself up because you are in the moment you, you are quote unquote in the zone. And so I want to share with you a technique that 
I was reminded by when I read this book on high on high performance habits because sometimes when I get in this zone or when I get into kind of that negative momentum that I outlined earlier what my quick fix is is I try to shift my attention and what I what I realized was that my energy over the last week and a half has been has has not been where I needed it to be and so what I did was I started looking back okay well what caused it right well what what led down this path and ultimately what led down this path was one instance that kind of snowballed into a big dramatic downward spiral over the last week and a half and so what happened with my positive energy and momentum was it actually went backwards and slowly turned into negative energy and momentum. I went from being enthusiastic, from being energized, from being positive to being just completely drained, negative, paranoid. I, uh, I didn't look at things in, in a clear light. There was no clarity. And so I was thinking back like, man, how did this all start? You know, I, was it because of my morning routine? Was it because of my diet? And, uh, and I think a lot of it had to do an impl- with that. But what ultimately happened was one day I, I spent a lot, a long, a very long time. For those of you who watch my videos daily, you know that because I explained that I spent about a good hour and a half answering every single question for a particular client. And, and I had a lot of things going on that day. But of course, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to feel like you're rushing your prospect. But this particular client, I almost felt like they were doing it on purpose. Like they wanted to know why. Well, why is this? Why is that? Why is this? Why is that? And then started coming up with questions and then mentioning that they shot me and and you know you get to a point where you're just like you know man am I being punked right now and so long story short is with that experience what happened was that even though I spent hours and hours and and multiple phone calls back and it took six weeks to get up to signing at signing literally at the final LE they uh, you know drilled me again spent another hour and a half and I was like man I'm so happy this is done I, I this is probably one of the absolute most tedious files that I've done in a long time and you know I'm, I'm but it's okay it's finally done Wu saw right patience and then when they finally signed the CD we set up the, the closing appointment Woo! everything's honky doy right like yeah I got him on to the next one well this person end up uh, canceling the loan man I t- Number one is I haven't had that happen in absolute the longest. Number two is if that did happen, typically there's good reason. This one had absolutely no good reason. And so it, it affected me. And sometimes that could affect you too, right? Like you could, be, you could be on a good one. Your energy could be on a good one, but that one instance happens or that one situation happens or that one result happens and it just completely throws you off. And just that, right? And I'm, I'm about as strong-willed as they get. But just that started this, this, this snowball effect because that created the negative energy. I was frustrated at my tonality uh, of frustrated, frustration started coming over to my other uh, clients that I dealt with and my prospects and I started becoming very short. Not only that, but there are questions and, and statements that were kind of planted from that experience with that canceled file that were triggered when I was when I was trying to originate new files and so like I would I would resemble it to a specific county or, or a tonality right of the prospect like oh man this sounds just like that one chick <laughs> right and then you're just like oh man they're probably just alike and then in and, 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 and again you start to react the same way and it feeds in and and slowly but surely it started to spread and next thing you know this momentum was in high in the high gear bad things started happening Prospects started canceling appointments. People who I who I was going to pitch already started changing their mind. Um, disclosures went out incorrectly, and prospects were then canceling because of a an error made them have a bad gut feeling. And so all these things started piling up. And then next thing you know, I'm starting to zero in no more on the solutions, but my whole focus started going into on the problems. And so I'm going to share with you because this ultimately led to a, a good 10 days of just mental warfare emotional warfare and who I owe absolute most uh, I guess my, who I should be apologetic towards is my team my circle my people around me because I know that they had to have experienced it 
and and I resemble it to like parenting like you know if you you know your, your kids look to you for your energy your kids look to you for your reaction and if you're walking around like a zombie upset mad and focus on anything but them they're gonna feel like they did something wrong get it and so even though my team didn't do anything wrong my team were was the amazing is it the absolute best I'm honored to have a team like them but because I was so selfish at the point and because my interests were so self-centered at that time it, it reflected as if I was upset about them. And so I had one of my agents come up to me and I'm like, hey man, there's something wrong. And I'm, you know, I'm looking at him, I'm like, yeah, no, everything's good, bro. You know, he's like, well, I could see it. I could see in your face. And then, you know, it, it snapped that, it's, it, it literally clicked. I'm like, damn, it's getting there, man. I know it's getting there. And again, when you're in that position, it's very hard to muster up the energy and the enthusiasm to say, you know what, fuck it. <laughs> because you're just already drenched. You're, you're already flowing in you're knee deep fuck that you're 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 neck deep in that in that zone and so it's hard to dig yourself out and so I want to share with you one of the one of the things that I've learned to help you avoid getting neck deep because you will get towards that you will go towards that that deeper end if you will that these events will happen to you and it's all about how you condition yourself so that you don't go down this spiral and waste 10 days of your life like I did dwelling on some shit that wasn't even true. It didn't even, right? It, it, like I could have fixed it on day one. I could have fixed it right when I hung up the phone. But I forgot to do that because I was so caught up in myself and I just, I wanted, I, I just wanted the easy way out. And so, and so here's my technique to you. The reason why we go through these challenges or why we go through kind of these downward spirals or these bad streaks is what they call it, is simply because we have a difficult time managing our time. Now, let me, let me explain. When we manage our time, the reason why it's effective is because we block our focus. And so from 2 to 2.30, our focus, if we manage our time, should be on one particular objective, one particular uh, task, right? But what happens when you don't manage your time? You can't put your focus on one particular task and therefore you begin uh, multitasking. And so you only got a part of your focus here, but, you're, but a lot of your focus is spread out on other things. And so it becomes very difficult to get this one thing done. And if you're like me, like I, I can't rest without knowing that one thing is done. Does that make sense? So it's, there are things that it's not on everything, but like, you know, like locking the doors at night or making sure everything's locked. But when, when you're in bed, right? Like there's that one thing like, man, did I lock my door? Or man, did I lock my car? I live in one of the absolute safest neighborhoods in Orange County, but I still have those thoughts because the way we're wired. And so sometimes I'll find myself like, damn, man, I'm just gonna go check. <laughs> and I'll go, you know what I mean? Like hit the alarm or the lock key on the door or make sure the, you know, the, the door's locked. And it's because you, you can't necessarily put that at rest. And so it may keep you up or it's going to affect the, the present moment at that time. And so here's the technique is that you know, a lot of people want to know, um, you know, how to how to manage time, and the ultimate underlying reason of wanting to know how to manage time is because you want to know how to put your full focus in a particular topic or a particular objective, and then you want to know how to avoid missing other objectives because there's just so many things that we have to do per day. Well. Besides being organized with your time, you also need to be organized and have clarity with external things. So like even your work area, the you know, your house, the way you live, your room, your car, everything has to be kind of in sync and organized. And why this is effective and why people want to know time management is because what they're really asking for is how do I focus on multiple things at that given time? right and so in other words how do i transition my focus so if i'm so so in other words how do i how do i know when to transition to when the right focus is needed for example when you're in sales right when you're in you're in you're taking inbound leads or you're doing uh sales origination sometimes the the biggest challenge that we have is in sales and why we can't sell is because we fail to transition properly from marketing to prospecting to uh, uh, interviewing to selling and then to closing, right? 
there's a sequential order of events and we have an issue or sometimes we have a problem with the transitioning part of it. And so sometimes we'll come in with the marketing and then prospecting and then before interviewing or before creating that bond, which is the next sequential order or this next sequential event, we'll, go, we'll transition straight into closing. Like we, can, we, we try to bypass important steps and we just, we, we do wrong transition because we're not in the moment. And, and typically we don't become in the moment because we're scattered. And so we, we, are, we have this anxiety within us where we know we gotta get you know, X, Y, and Z done, but we're still on step A, B, and C. And so we're trying to bypass D, E, F, G and just go straight to Z, get it? And so, and so when you have this challenge, when you, when you are feeling burnt out and you are, are getting to a point where it's like, man, my energy just is not where it's supposed to be. I want you to take a step back and try this technique. Number one is realize how much shit you're really trying to hold on to. How many, how, how many actions you're trying to cram into one day and realize how unorganized it might be. Like you might just be handling issues as they come, but that is more reactive. You have to be proactive. You have to be prepared because what luck really means is when is when is when practice meets opportunity right and then they they just meet together well the practices that i share with you here at sales remastered is so that when you meet the opportunity you can put everything you've learned and practice into play because that's how you get lucky is because when we when we go through it, the hardest thing to re recognize or remember sometimes are the lessons that we were given because we're reacting based off of an emotion. And so if it's happened to you before where you've, where you've taken the baggage or the frustration from one event and it's lingered into the rest of your day, into the events, the rest of the events in your day, it's because you're having a hard time to transition, but the, the harm in that and, and the danger of not being able to properly transition your focus or transition your time and transition your efforts and your energy is ultimately your you bringing in baggage to the rest of your day will ripple throughout the rest of your day and then it determines the outcome of that day. And, and then what happens is when you go into the next day with the ripple effect of the day before, this is where your past comes in and holds you back you're dwelling on the past because you're like, man, I had a fucked up day yesterday. <laughs> Woo! Right? You ever had, like, man, yesterday was rough. Right? And then you start thinking about yesterday, like, well, why was it rough? And this is where your focus starts going into problems rather than solutions. Because then you start digging in like, oh, because I had this one client. Mm bad oh man because i had this one state or because i had this one question or because i had this one experience or because i had this one cancel there's always that reason but that reason if you notice was in the past it has nothing to do with right now or what could potentially be and so sometimes we have a hard time from transitioning our focus from present time to right now um, uh, I'm sorry, from the past into presently right now, right? So our focus is more about, well, why, why was this hard? You know, wh what was the problem yesterday? What was the problem a year ago, 10 years ago, right? And our mind does crazy things. It, 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 it gravitates towards familiarity. And so when, when our mind is triggered by certain things like, like, uh, like fearful reactions around people, like, oh no, the market's gonna crumble. There's a, <laughs> there's a recession that's gonna happen. Our mind will go back to time and either we experienced it or maybe our family experienced it or we were told by people that this may happen. And so we start to, co we start to combine those thoughts and be like, oh man, maybe it's true. And then our mind start, takes away its focus of, of the now and, and what could potentially be to things that aren't even real. And these illusions create kind of this weird energy and our energy becomes so f focused on the negativity that it becomes negative. It starts to attract negative momentum. And so in order to, to sustain your positive momentum, the absolute best thing you could do is of course be, be uh, mindful of your time and how you manage your time. But more importantly, understand how to transition your focus and go in. So if your focus was to originate and you had a bad experience in originating, now you got to go into sales and pitching. If you had a bad experience just right before you go into pitch, it's, it may carry through your tonality. So how do you switch it? How do you put, how do you take off the origination hat and then put on the hat of selling? 
because now you because your prospects don't care about your last you know hour of experience they don't care if you're having a bad day your prospects just care about what what do you got for me how much value can you give me and so we in sales have to kind of you know, it's like uh, schizophrenia. We have to have all these different type of personalities. We have to be the marketer. We got to be the interviewer. We got to be the best friend. We got to be the closer. We got to be the networker. And so, and then we got to be the operations favorite pet. And we got to, and then of all that, we then we got to be our manager's best, you know, right? So there's just so many different things that we have to juggle. And the best way to do it is to really learn how to transition. And so if you're going from an origination time block into a sales pitch time block you don't want to carry the baggage that you had regardless if it was if it was bad or good you still still i mean it's good to of course carry that positive momentum and that rush into your next you know that's why they say the best time to sell is to make a sale is right after you made a sale is because that positive momentum gives you that courage but at the same time it's because you're in the zone of selling you weren't in the zone of originating get it and so when you go from a time block of originating and let's say you had a bad experience and now you're going into the time block of selling the importance is you have to let go and turn take off that hat from the origination time block and completely forget about it because of all the negative emotions or, or energy you experience within that time block now it's a whole new time block now now whatever happened you know that hour before it doesn't matter it's a new hour to reset and this is why I lead my team with with this mentality of every single day we reset. So whatever kind of day you had yesterday, whether good or bad, it's a brand new day today. What are you going to do today? Don't hold on to the past or it's going to anchor you down. Instead, worry about right now because that's how you build tomorrow. Get it? And so when we when we transition and we're having kind of a difficult time, like let's say you had a, a tough time into going into, you know, from tra- from uh, originating into selling, you you have to you have to literally let go and sometimes we we are tense because we had a bad experience so what you can do is just get into a quiet zone walk around put your headphones on put on a a a song to zero in on 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 yourself so it's kind of like a quick meditation where you have to tell yourself okay release right like i'm done i'm done with this particular time what what happened is going to be okay right like i don't that all that energy the negative uh response that i just went through that negative experience that i just went through it has nothing to do with what what i'm going to achieve in the hours to come the bad experience that i had yesterday has nothing to do with the potential and possibility i have right now and today and so right now is when i'm going to take control and actually change the direction of my momentum from being negative to being positive and i'm going to move forward i'm going to take control right now because i understand that the importance of me sustaining that positive momentum is going to determine of how i'm going to feel tomorrow and i don't want to feel like how i just felt tomorrow i want to change that because i operate at my highest at my highest level of of performance when i'm positive when i'm optimistic when i'm enthusiastic and my energy is in a better state so i'm gonna find where that better state is now because it it's it's time to reset and now my focus is this objective is selling is pitching so so then you ask yourself the question how would i How would I sound if I were the absolute best closer? How would I sound if I were the absolute best person for my prospect to hire? What questions would I ask and how would I deliver the information if I were the ideal person that my prospect can choose to hire? And mind you, the words, right? Like, my prospect can choose to hire me. That's how we have to look at it. Because sometimes we go in expecting it to happen. Like, oh, well, I already pitched you. You're supposed to go with me. Sometimes we forget the business aspect of it all. Just like when we're in the heat of the moment, we forget to transition our focus and be 100% in the moment. Be 100% in the given task and know that it's 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 what's happening right then and there not your mind shouldn't be still captured in the hour that you had before of the lost call or the lost sale or the canceled loan file that's not where it should be you should be directly in the moment with your prospect and that is how you capture their attention that is how you answer the question of well how would the ideal person who my prospect can choose to hire sound how would they how would they act how would they control themselves how would they communicate those are the answers and when you answer and you discover that and then you go into that time block you have this new sense of being reborn you have this new energy and 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 kind of this vibe 
right? It's like two chains. It's just a vibe. <laughs> it literally is. And so, and so when you when you learn how to transition, you start to become more powerful. But more importantly, you start to to control your momentum. And all you did was just manage your time well. You just blocked off your time and and you handled one task and put 100% focus on one task rather than looking at your entire day, seeing that you have nine tasks and try to do all nine tasks all throughout the day. Get it? So you're gonna actually achieve more by by what feels like is slowing us down because we're not concentrating on anything else but that now. Just make sure that what you're doing in that now is worth your time, and you're not trying to chase no wood. You're not trying to, you know, what I mean, um, explain why the the sky's blue, why water's wet. You're not trying to explain, you know, the science of air, right? Like you're just like, you know, to someone who may not even buy from you. So just be careful with that. And I really do hope this video has helped. Appreciate your time. It's about 25 minutes in. So if you watch this video the whole way through, do me a favor and smash that like button. If this is your first time watching Sales Remastered, click the subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of any upcoming topics. And check out the Facebook page. Check out the Instagram. Check me out on LinkedIn. Add me to your professional network. Um, look at my pedigree. Look at my history. Look at my experience. But more importantly, look at the free sales script and Sales Remastered University. Links below the notes and just the quick bio or the quick uh, 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 intro of this video. Like I'll, I'll have kind of a quick blog, but underneath that I'll have a link to my banker sales script and then also a link to Sales Remastered Ver University. Hopefully you check it out. And if you like what you see, enroll and become a student and learn this mindset. Learn the, the techniques that you need to win in this industry. And I'll see you inside. Another Bye. random question that I get asked a lot is, hey man, I see you coming from a gym. That gym looks so familiar. Are you by the gym? Are you at the gym by Lone Depot? Lone Depot happens to be probably my absolute top competitor. And, uh, and so I got a lot of people from Lone Depot that give a lot of support to my channel. And I don't mind helping out even my competitors. The bottom line is I just want to provide value. And I just happen to connect more with a lot of people from that particular company. And uh, so they'll ask because it's, my gym is right around the corner from them, right? And so they'll be like, hey, yo, bro, is that, is that 25-hour fitness sport in Foothill Ranch? And you're damn right, boo-boo. That's right across the street from your boy. <laughs> and that's the studio. Some of y'all hate motherfuckers be like, man, why you in your Scion doing videos, bro? Doing Uber and shit. I ain't got no Uber on my glass, bro. That's my studio. It's the mobile studio. You always see the inside, but you never see the outside. Well, now you do. This is out of Pump talk and get to it. Hard liquor here. Rip hard, really do a hard liquor here. We can buy the boy all night.